Hello everyone, it's time for another video. This time we got this piece of gear. I just take the camera down. And we got here we have a Healy Pecot 52 sorry 5328 a universal counter. And you can see the camera shutter interfering with the multiplex of the LEDs. How it is okay and here are the inputs and this have the option C channel C option on it as well uh, what I'm doing I'm feeding 20 megahertz from my uh, Hilo Packard 3335A which goes up to 80 megahertz so I'm just feeding from there into this 20 megahertz and you can see what it's giving me unfortunately there are a few issues with this uh, with this machine, I don't know if you can hear it, let me just take the hood out. I'm just going to pull this quite forward to here, see if you can hear this fizzing noise. Okay, that's not coming from the actual main transformer. There are a few other transformers under here. Uh, if we can just let me see see that little black thing there that's a transformer there I assume it's coming from there so that we need to sort that out what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this apart I'm not gonna fix it I'm not gonna attempt to fix it or anything like this because um, as I said I'm gonna take this apart and put all the parts on eBay for maybe someone who got the similar kind of thing or similar device and is looking for his part so I'm just gonna take it apart and leave it there because I do not have space to store things like this here I do have two more stuff over there to take it apart these are um, again Hewlett Packard 3325 air function generators they go up to 20 megahertz these both are in perfect working condition again I think they're already on my eBay store so that's that that I might take apart later on but right now we're gonna go and take apart and tear this universal counter down to its basic components I mean basic everything so what we got here we got its uh, standard time base so it is crystal uh, oscillator and this is an ovenized crystal oscillator obviously this is an extra option to add to this uh, counter it doesn't come standard with this so that's an extra option this is an extra option and I believe there's an another option that goes up to here which acts as a, a voltmeter so yeah that's that and we got channel 1 we got channel 2 and then we got channel 3 so we got ABC channel and this one goes from there we go 5 to 512 megahertz and these ones it doesn't say up to what they go to but yeah anyway uh, this it's a bit loose it's a bit funny this one is a bit stiffer harder it's better so we can see here this is the, I've got at the check at the moment here so it's showing you the 10 megahertz from the local oscillator so if I just turn it off, and uh, we just take this, oops, it's quite warm now. It has been running for a while. Yeah, that's quite warm. If I just run that now, we're on the same place again, and you can see we don't have an oscillator, so we got all zeros. And the counter is not going to work because it doesn't have a form of reference to compare the input signal to its reference to give you the actual frequency so if there's no reference there's gonna be no frequency output either because it's got nothing to compare it to so anyway I'm gonna put the camera down on its homemade tripod there we go should be alright so let's see what we got here we got its oscillator There we go. 
HP Crystal Oscillator 1050 sorry yeah 10544A Healy Packard then you can adjust the frequency fine adjusted through there it's quite warm it was running for about maybe 10 minutes and it is it is quite warm it's got some form of circuitry underneath as well and uh, this obviously connects like this and then you put the screws there and you got all the other serial numbers and bets and bobs over there so let's just do that maybe I zoom in a little bit so everyone can see so what we're gonna do we're gonna take this whole thing apart so what we need we need to start from here I know people out here they're gonna message me and say what the hell are you doing get all this you know good equipments and stuff while you're taking them apart but as I said before um, I just want to leave something for people on the internet so they can if they need things like this or parts they can go and purchase it and besides if I really don't have space to store things like this or even sell these as an actual unit itself because uh, it's just it takes too much space to store this as a unit I don't have space and another thing is these old-school Hewlett Packard stuff are really really heavy delivery on these you know it's it's just a bit of a hassle to pack them up to you know all of that stuff can't be really be bothered for it so it's better to just take it apart and leave the parts everything just comes out easily let me just zoom out there we go so what we gotta do is we gotta just Unscrew these. There's a lot of screws involved with these old school gears. It's nothing like the new ones, where it's so simple to open up with one screw or something. Sometimes not even a screw, but these old school gears, they've got a lot of screws. How now you got these days, you got a box which has been machined and bent into shape. This one you got all frames that you put together to form a box or to form an enclosure. So I'll just show you what I mean by that. So you open these bits on the side so now you got so you got this frame which forms one corner of the actual enclosure so what you got here let me just zoom in so you got this back panel here back end and you got this front and then you got the two sides which are these and then you just screw them together and that creates a frame and then you cover the top and you cover the bottom and presto you got your enclosure for your uh, whatever that you're making but nowadays it's just one sheet of metal which is bent using press into shape and they just got a little cover on top and maybe one screw to open the whole thing or sometimes it's not even a screw it's just open push together with clips and stuff so yeah old school gears a lot more involved trying to take things apart uh, I'm not gonna as I'm gonna put this for sale I'm not gonna cut through it like that I did with the with the other gear that I did video on like that military gear I'm not gonna cut everything I'm just gonna take it apart like a human oh man there's a lot of screws again I definitely need to get myself an electric screwdriver because these screws man this stuff take forever to open up ah, I thought this was 
this have a magnet on it magnetized top obviously not oh man I got I got tons of screws from opening this HP gears and stuff uh, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take the front bit out and then we go through it and just look at it look at it more detail look at the boards and stuff and see how it's constructed together so this is the back end this was where the that funky noise was coming from from the transformer Whenever you get any of this uh, old school gear from uh, HP, Agilent, or even sometimes Tektronics, I love the fact that they have these uh, screw on capacitors. I really like these. I know they're a bit bulky compared to today's standard, but I just like the fact that, that you know you, you get screwed, they get screwed into the PCB rather than being soldered on. So, I was holding everything, and yep, it's holding all the front panel knobs, are holding everything down. So what happens is everything should come out. So this is the channel C. As you can see here, I've opened up. It's kind of a modular. So as I said here, you get your uh, voltmeter going to here. Then obviously you got your channel C here, and then you got this whole thing that comes out as well. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to lay it down like so, and then you got these little pullers that you can pull the whole thing off there we go and that's channel C option taken out there we are so we got the HP costume chip and I believe the other two down there are HP costume chip as well. And then we got some other miscellaneous ICs and we got this little funky looking fuse. Yes, nice looking fuse. Just take it off. Look at that. Whoop. There we go. There's the fuse. The fuse has disappeared into the dust. And see what we can find it from here yep there we go little tiny glass looking fuse there we are what does it say on it 125 volt 10 amp can't be right sorry yep one and a half amp I believe he says oh it says 110. Huh. There we are. Let's zoom in on it. There we go. 125 one. Is that 110 amp? Something like that. Anyway, put that back the way it was. It was down there. So we just put it back again. Oop. There we are. So yeah, oh we got another one there. So that is the 512 megahertz front end. See here, so that just plugs into into here, and that's for the option C. So we put this to one side. Then what we got here. Got another board. This I don't be, I don't believe this is part of the option. I think this are, yep, yeah, this is part of the actual counter itself. I don't think this is an option. So got there. That's the back of it, and this is 
front of it. So you got maker capacitors, one percent. Yeah, you got one percent. Three hundred volt. Let me just camera zooms in. There we are. So you got all kind of good stuff in these. So we got this is two percent. Again, two percent. It's got tantalum capacitors as well. And these are all the weird HP. They're all, you know, they got their own numbers here. I believe these are probably TTL chips. And we've got National Semi. And the date code on them, you can see here, so we've got 82. Yep, they're all 82. 82, yeah. So, all the chips. On the 80s, that's that. That board can go over there. Okay, so the top board over here it is for the. Let's see. Yep, it's the HPIP board here. So let's just take this apart. Camera zoomed in. It's amazing how big this unit is for what it does. I mean, today you just got a little tiny, tiny footprint for something that does twice as this maybe or even more than this this goes up to only 512 megahertz you know if you get the Raquel Dana ones that go up to a couple of gigahertz and it's you know less than half uh, the size of this so let's just see there we are Got this little wire running to the front. Take that off, and we gotta take this off. And this is the HPIP board. So we got a custom HPIC on a ceramic. Then we got miscellaneous ICs over there, and we got some other ICs over here. And we got the interface input, and we got the switch to set the address for this device and that's the back end of it I believe this is an option this doesn't come with the the unit doesn't come with this as a standard so this is an, another option that you have to pay for and get which uh, yeah I believe everything was back in the days when you used these machines used to be made everything was an option like today's cars when you buy a car everything is extra so by the time you get your car and you come out you've paid double what it was advertised that's another way for them to make money so the noise was coming from here this area which obviously was the power supply area uh, I'm sure everything is all the capacitors are all drained down so I'm not gonna worry about shocking myself with the capacitors okay so what we gotta do is Got to open all of these screws out and take the unit all out. I can see here, I don't know if that's visible on the camera, we got all voltage rails over here. I have to just zoom in. I don't know if that shows or not. So we got plus 25 volt over here then we got plus 5 volt over here then we got minus 5.2 minus 15 plus 15 so you got all the voltages coming from your power supply which is this section from the power supply I'm um, just sort the camera out there we got so we got from power supply all the voltages coming via these wires all the way at the bottom into this and then you got all your expansion slots over here which you get your uh, options fit into them and then the rest are the actual circuitry for the counter Let me just mm. 
that's a, another important thing to open up. So you got other voltage rails here 